Intel finally revealed the cause of their CPU issues, first review of Ryzen 9000, next-gen Intel gets tested, and Nvidia has a monster RTX 50 GPU with insane performance. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, if you've been following the channel, you know that Intel has had some major issues with their 13th and 14th gen CPUs. And of course, if you aren't following the channel, but you like PC hardware, what on earth are you thinking? Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon for all the latest PC hardware news. Either way, Intel, tons of issues, in fact, there's even a new problem that they're having, having to do with all of this. Dylan Brown, who's an Unreal Engine supervisor and feature film VFX at the Model Farm Visual Effects Studio, actually posted that his company is experiencing a 50% failure rate for systems powered by Intel's Core i9, 13900K, and 14900K. And as a result, the company is deploying AMD's next gen Zen 5 9950X processors in place of Intel's solutions. Basically, this has been absolutely horrible for Intel, and because of that, they finally issued a statement. As you can see right here, it says Intel has found the source of the widespread instability issues affecting their 13th and 14th gen processors, and they actually made a statement here. It says, quote, we have determined that the elevated operating voltage is causing instability issues in some 13th, 14th gen processors. Our analysis of return processors confirms that the elevated operating voltage is stemming from a microcode algorithm resulting in incorrect voltage requests to the processor. Like I said, when a lot of this was going around and Intel sort of seemed to blame motherboard manufacturers for going over spec. I told you that clearly was not the case because these CPUs have safeguards for exactly stuff like that. So it is an issue with the microcode algorithm and according to them, they are working to release a patch for motherboard manufacturers in mid-August and that anyone affected by the issue should contact Intel support in the meantime. Now, believe it or not, there's actually another issue and in their sort of main statement, they actually didn't discuss it, but they at the very least acknowledged it, which is questions about an oxidation issue on the CPU. And the answer is that they can confirm that there was via oxidation manufacturing issues and that only a small number of instability reports can be connected to that issue. And apparently it was addressed back in 2023. Of course, that small number doesn't really tell us anything. Is that 100, 1,000, 10,000? I don't know. And why didn't they tell us this back in 2023? Not a good look to say the least. And really, while it is great that they're finally addressing this, though it really just seems like it's due to tons and tons of pressure. My question actually is, now that we know it's a voltage regulation issue, a uh, high voltage kills processors. At the very least, it can drastically shorten the lifespan of processors. So what's going to happen to those who already purchased them and have been using them for months, having this issue and potentially damaging their CPU or at least shortening the lifespan of the CPU. Basically, while they are finally giving us answers as well as a fix, this still isn't that great of a response. And next up for today, we're finally starting to see performance numbers for Intel's next-gen desktop CPUs. And as you can see right here, this one comes from known leaker Jaken. And this leaker has provided details for upcoming hardware in the past, so this does definitely seem to be reliable, and at least according to video cards, it's already been partially confirmed. Now, with that said, this is not actually a release sample. This is specifically a qualification sample for their Arrow Lake S CPU, but as they state here, they typically typically send these out just before switching to mass production. So these should be very close to the final performance. And as you can see, he ran tests with this through multiple benchmarks. And when we look here, you can see overall it gets a 4.32% performance increase. Now, with that said, in Cinebench R23, it actually got a very impressive 17.55% increase in Geekbench Multicore, 14.56% increase. So not bad though, overall we are unfortunately only looking at a 4.32% increase versus the 14,900K. And not only that, but for example, here in Cinebench R23, as you can see, the 9950X at 230 watts. Now, this score right here is at 250 watts. So 
even less wattage the 9950x does end up coming out on top and in fact at 90 watts less the 9950x is actually right on par just slightly less than intel's next gen with that said there is a very big difference because this has actually already been tested with engineering sample 2 and you can see that versus the 14900k that one did very poorly so this is a big jump in performance from that earlier sample basically things are definitely getting significantly better and next up, we finally have one of the first reviews of AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 CPUs. Specifically, this is for their Ryzen 9 9900X, and apparently the reviewer was actually able to get a retail version of this CPU, so this should be very close to final performance, depending on what kind of software updates that may need to be done when these CPUs ultimately release, but we can at least expect these to be fairly close. And in this, he ran quite a bit of gaming benchmarks, specifically comparing it to the Ryzen 7 7800X3D. And as you can see, at least in some of these, the 9900X does very close in terms of performance. You can see here, it is a little bit slower here, but just barely. But with that said, in some of these, the performance difference does get a little bit more dramatic. Here, very similar, but once again, you start seeing a pretty big drop off. And of course, some people are saying that at 4K, the performance is like very much neck and neck, but that's just because the bottleneck ultimately becomes a GPU at that point. So yeah, you ultimately wanna look at the lower resolutions and here, obviously the 7800X3D absolutely wins. And of course, that is at least a little surprising. I ultimately called that they would be very much neck and neck. If you remember a little while back, I shared this video. Now, really quickly, I was just about to share that clip that I'd shared a little while back from AMD's Tech Day event where AMD themselves said that the 9700X is actually faster than the 7800X 3D, though we're talking around like 2% faster, but I just now got an email from my AMD rep, as you can see right here. Now, I don't even really think I'm supposed to blur their name out or anything, but I did that just in case. But this is official and I was allowed to share it. As you can see, this is a statement from AMD's SVP and GM of Computing and Graphics. And what it says is, quote, we appreciate the excitement around Ryzen 9000 series processors. During final checks, we found the initial production units that were shipped to our channel partners did not meet our full quality expectations. Out of an abundance of caution and to maintain the highest quality experiences for every Ryzen user, we are working with our channel partners to replace the initial production units with fresh units. As a result, there will be a short delay in retail availability. The Ryzen 7 9700X and 9600X processors will not go on sale on August 8th, with the Ryzen 9 9950X and 9900X going on sale August 15th. Basically, it looks like their first batch of processors didn't actually meet their expectations. Now, we aren't 100% sure if that's performance expectations, so that may explain a little bit of this performance, I'm really not sure. Maybe they're seeing all the issues Intel is now having with some of their processors and they may have found a problem. So they're like, no, we're just gonna hold off and not even release it. Either way, this is something that AMD just said, so it does look like the release date has been moved back at least a little. Regardless, the performance that we're seeing here, not terrible or anything like that. I mean, they had originally said that the 7000 X3D series was faster at gaming, so maybe that is actually still true but regardless this is the first look and lastly for today there's one massive story about intel's next gen rtx 5000 series gpus specifically that nvidia is in fact working on a titan card as you can see right here this one originally comes from red gaming tech but as i'll get to in just a second there are other well-known leakers that also discuss this but at least according to this, it is apparently set to be called Titan AI. I guess they're taking cues from AMD on this one. Hopefully that doesn't end up being the final release name, but at least according to this, it is so far. Now, before I get to the actual performance targets, I wanted to really quickly show you the other leaker who also claims this is a thing. As you can see right here, video cards actually asked the well-known leaker, copite 7 Kimmy, who of course, especially when it comes to Nvidia, has gotten tons of leaks right in the past. And according to him, he says, 
the Big Bang does exist. So now we actually have a couple separate leakers claiming this really is a thing. But with that said, keep in mind that he does mention that the biggest problem is whether it will actually be used for sale. Titan based on Ada Lovelace also existed, but as you know, it was never actually sold. So keep that in mind, but regardless, when it comes to performance targets, or really quickly, I do want to say that, uh, at least according to Red Gaming Tech, the Titan AI is expected to use the entire GPU. Remember that the RTX 5090 was set to only use a bin portion of it, but obviously that's not too much of a surprise. The 4090 doesn't use the entire 8102 die, so yeah, this is very common, but apparently the Titan AI uses the whole thing. And at least according to this, the performance targets for the Titan AI is whopping 63% performance over the RTX 4090. Not only that, but the 5090 is expecting a 48% performance increase. Now, hopefully this is not coming from some new DLSS or anything like that. Hopefully this is pure rasterization. And if that's the case, these numbers are definitely pretty impressive. Not only that, but according to this, the 5080 is 29% faster than the 4080 super or at least once again these are performance targets these are what they're expecting these to do they're effectively their goal then we move down to the 5070 and we're looking at a 26 percent improvement over the rtx 4070 super basically at least when it comes to the highest end cards nvidia's next gen is looking pretty awesome so while that does it for today, are you pumped for NVIDIA's next gen? Would you be purchasing a Titan AI even though as usual it's not necessarily all that focused on gaming, though sort of NVIDIA will market it that way, but it's more meant to be kind of an all around card, or would you opt for the RTX 5090? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.